What is up everyone? Welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to solder these small toothpick and micro sized boards. As you can see, let me try to get this in focus. They have very, very small pads. So it makes soldering pretty difficult. So I'm going to be showing how to remove solder with using a solder wick and uh, the type of soldering end that you're going to be wanting to use for pads this small and the ideal temperatures that you should be welding at. So let's get into it. So when it comes to these small boards, you got to be really careful with overheating the pads because they can come off not using such a big soldering tip to where you're going to be applying too much heat to other areas that you don't want to apply heat to so this is what they would call a pencil soldering tip it's very small so the ideal temperature to start for soldering for lead based solder which is what i'm using uh, is about 343 to 371 degrees Celsius, which is 650 to 700 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the problem is with the welder that I have right now, it does not have a digital display on it, so it's really hard to tell what temperature you're actually soldering at, so you gotta be careful if you have something like that. So I highly recommend getting a better one with a digital display that'll show you what you're soldering at. So I usually go pretty hot, so you gotta be quicker the more heat that you're using because you don't want to apply too much heat to the board and start burning out components that you don't want to burn out. So first things first, we're going to try to remove this old solder on this. Let me get this in focus and show you how you go about doing that with solder wick. So this is soldering wick right here. It's copper wire strands and it also has a formula in it like flux, which I believe it might actually be flux, I'm not sure, that removes solder and draws it towards the uh, copper wire strands. And as you can see, I got some right here. And this is no clean, so you don't have to worry about cleaning it off with alcohol. So I'm going to cut this piece off, so I like to use it closer to the end. And another tip is do not hold the wire when you're removing solder. It does heat up along the entire length and you will burn yourself. So the first tip to, well actually I'll just show you. Now when you're removing solder, you wanna place it like so, and the heat is not gonna be coming from the tip of the soldering iron, it's actually gonna be more on the side. So you're gonna to have to be on an angle. That's another thing that makes soldering on these really small boards difficult. So you're gonna place your solder wick right here, and you're gonna put the iron on top. And as you can see, with smaller pads like this, it doesn't take much heat to draw that solder off. And as you can see, we have pulled the solder off. There's still a little bit left. But the best thing to do with solder wick is to actually run some solder onto the tip that you're going to be placing down onto the wick. That'll help transfer more heat quicker and draw up the solder off the pads. I like to kind of run it across. As you can see, that does a much better job of getting it off at once. I'll move on to these motor pads right here. And I just, when this board went bad, I actually uh, blew a MOSFET on here. You can see right there. So, that's a good board to demonstrate on. I was just running the solder across trying to clean some off and it kind of just bridged everything. So we're going to clean off the rest of this board with the solder wick and get into soldering these small pads.
Okay. So now as you can see, we have the pads all cleaned off. Now when I originally soldered this, I was using rosin paste flux, which I'll show you what that looks like. A rosin paste flux is just like it sounds, it's really pasty and thick. And I use this on my five inch builds. Uh, using it on this, I wouldn't recommend it. Working on something small, I would try to find something with like a needle syringe and a little bit smaller of an applicator because this stuff, you don't wanna put flux where you're not trying to solder. And flux causes the solder to travel a little bit easier to where you're trying to weld. Now I did use that rosin paste flux on this board and because of that, I have to clean it off because this is not a no clean product. So if you don't clean it off, over time, it will start to corrode your components on the board. So that is why it is important to clean it off. So I use 99% alcohol for my electronics, just to be safe. You could probably get away with 91, but I like using 99. That's what that brown stuff is on here. That's the old flux. So I wanna create a clean surface and go ahead and get all this off here. all that nasty stuff. So now you can see we are clean and ready to go. So the trick with soldering is you need to work quick especially if you're working with more heat. Like I mentioned earlier you don't want to transfer too much heat into the board and you'll immediately be able to tell that if you're holding on to the board it'll get hot fast. Um, more commonly when you're soldering up your battery cable like uh, especially with XT60s, this is an XT30, so it's a little bit smaller and easier to work with. But with the XT60s, you got to apply a lot more heat to it in a bigger area, so you need a bigger tip. Something like this is not going to work. But for microboards, it does. So I'll show you what it looks like with a rosin paste flux. I don't like to let things go to waste, and so instead of buying the right kind, I just stick with this. So I'll use something like some fine tweezers to apply it. And I'll just scrape a little bit off, work it on there. So you don't need much. And I'll just dab it on the pads individually. You don't want too much because then you're gonna have a big mess of flux that you gotta clean off and you'll have solder flowing everywhere. Just dab a little bit on with the tweezers. So I'll start by soldering up this side of the board. All right, now we're ready to solder. Now you'll immediately see when I start to apply heat, what that flux starts to do, it'll start to liquefy and allow the solder to flow better than it normally would. So we're gonna get a little bit of an angle here because like I said, you're not getting heat on the tip. So if you just touch with the tip, you're not gonna get a lot of heat. So touch here. Good to go. Bring in the solder, let it flow on the pad. Good. And don't breathe the smoke in, it is poisonous. Bring it in. Just working very quick. Oop. Okay. Now onto the motor pads. These take a little bit more heat. There 
we go. Very quick. So there's the pads. Got some nice beads on here and you don't want to overdo it because these pads are very small and very close together. So for a board like this, what will start to happen is you get something like this. I'll show you. Mess it up on purpose. Actually, the flux is helping it right now. But it'll start to bridge across, and then you'll have a big bubble right there, bridging two pads together, and you don't want that. So, if you make a mistake like that, you can always go back with your soldering wick, or you could try to move it across and distribute it like that. And that also takes care of it as well. But in the case that that's just making more of a mess, I would just remove it with the solder wick. And we'll go back through and add another bead on it. And there we go. So because I used the flux on this, which is no clean, you're going to want to go back over that with some alcohol, wipe it all down. You can do when you're, do it when your build's complete or you can just do it right after. I like to get it clean right away because that stuff does get sticky. There you can go. You can see that we got some shiny looking pads. Now we're gonna solder the other side not using flux. And these pads are very small, so it doesn't take much heat, like I said. So you really might not even need any flux, you'll see. See how it had a hard time transferring the heat to that? Now that could also be that you don't have a good enough angle on, so you're not transferring the heat, right? So it takes a little bit longer. But you want to make sure that you have a solid joint on every pad. So you don't want cold welds. Touch that back up. And there you go. If you got an old board laying around, instead of tossing it, uh, you could definitely repurpose it for something like this to practice soldering. The soldering is not that hard. It just takes some practice and patience and you'll pick it up pretty quickly. Just watch some YouTube videos just like this. If you don't mind, you could hit that subscribe button, like the video. I greatly appreciate it. And let's talk about some of the tools that I recommend you getting. So obviously you're going to need a soldering iron. And this is a cheap one, a uh, solder station, picked up off of Amazon, uh, probably for 20 bucks or something. It's a Vastar, never heard of it, but it works. Uh, some good snips, or side cutters. These ones are really good, and I'll put these in the, these links in the description, so you can check these out if you're interested in getting these same ones. Some soldering wick, some fine tweezers, which these came with the soldering station. Uh, some flux. This, like I said, this works good for five-inch builds, bigger pads. Something smaller would get something like a syringe applicator, so you could really control that. And as far as the alcohol, I got the 99%. You could pick this up at like Ace Hardware. I think it was like $24 there, and that was for a whole gallon, so that'll last forever. And obviously some solder. So for this, I'm using a 0.6 millimeter diameter. And this is 60% grade senior solder. Uh, or you can look for 6040. 6040 is a good one for electronics also. When you're picking out soldering wire, unless uh, you have a soldering station that you bought and it comes with it like this one did. I've been using the solder forever and I've still got a bunch left. 
Uh, most of the time you can get solder with a flux core in it, so it actually has flux inside the uh, solder wire. And you can see that when it's heating up, I actually turn this off, let it heat up for a second. So when this heats up, you can see the smoke coming off of it, and that is the flux burning off. So this has a flux core in it. So most of the time you actually might not even need to buy flux, but it does help uh, even if you're using some solder wire with a flux core in it. So keep that in mind too. Uh, make sure that when you're getting solder wire that you're always getting it with a flux core. So the purpose of this video was intended for newer people in the hobby. Uh, soldering can seem a little bit daunting and push people away from it, but if you can teach yourself how to solder, it'll save you a whole lot of money because I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who don't know how to solder who will break something and not know how to repair it and just go spend a bunch of money to get it replaced rather than you know resoldering a wire on a pad that came loose or the wire got frayed. Soldering is a big part of this hobby, repairing things yourself, and that's probably one of my favorite parts. I love soldering and believe me at first when I started doing it I was terrible at it. I burned up some stuff, uh, bridged things together, didn't know the proper heat. I was afraid to use too much heat then I wasn't getting a good joint but it doesn't take long to get used to it. So I hope this video helped you out and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.